Hi, in this video, we're going to be moving away from using scripts in favor of using the commuter module, which is a feature of Open Insight. And the commuter module enables you to better manage your code and to work in your code in a much more efficient way. So we'll take a look at that right after these few words. Hello, you're listening to Martin, and this is the next video in my series looking at getting started with Open Insight 10. And today we're going to be looking at using commuter modules. Now I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part, I'm going to go through a short introduction of what a commuter module is and where it's come from, etc. And then we'll dive into the commuter module generator to create a a commuter module for a very simple form and we'll probably do one for our main form as well our patients form um, so I'll make a note on the screen at which point to jump to within the video if you want to skip the introduction so up until now within our form both for the form and the buttons and other controls we've been adding in quick events and scripts to drive the functionality and that's all well and good except we're starting to get blocks of code all over the place and sometimes when your application is growing you will find that you might have two three four five six blocks of code that are all working together and sometime down the line let's say a year later you need to update that functionality you've got to remember where all of those individual blocks of code are and how they fit together and it can become quite difficult to maintain now back in the days of AREV our DOS application development suite back in the 80s the developers came up with the idea of a commuter module so this was a single program that sat behind each of the windows or forms back in those days and that one program held all of the code for the screen and in today's language we probably refer to those as a model view controller design pattern um, and this pattern works really well for open insight in the same way that if you have developed in Visual Studio or some of the modern 4GL programs, you'll have the idea of, of having your window and then a block of code. And it's exactly the same within Open Insight, but with Open Insight 10, of course, you've now got the ability to have a block of code open that you're working on, so it'd be a stored procedure rather than the script event here and also your form, and you can move backwards and forwards between the two. Now, if you're coming up from AREV, it's interesting to note that Open Insight improves on the old AREV event calling method in a number of ways. So the event model is much richer, so it's easier to detect how and exactly when to respond to different events. You can pass any number of parameters to your event module, so you don't need to write as much code and to maintain all of that and guess the current situation within your application. You've also got access to get property and set property to affect the window directly. So it's much easier to get exactly the result that you need. And also the 64K limit on the program size has gone. So you now don't need to worry about your program size and these programs can become very, very, very big. Right. In the um, clinic application, we're going to be using the commuter module for the appointments window, but I haven't got that yet, and I don't really want to play around with the patients window. I want to leave that as quick events and scripts. So I've got a brand new copy of Open Insight here, uh, and we're going to use that for the purposes of just showing you how the commuter module generator works. So I'm going to create a new form, 
and uh, we'll change that to center desktop move that up a little bit and drop on a couple of buttons we're going to make this as simple as we can so that it's easier to see what's going on within the commuter module generator um, it's not a pretty window but it doesn't really matter events on the first button we will set a quick event that will simply clear the form so we'll save and close on the second button we will add a script so we're going to be able to see the quick event going across and also the script so val1 equals 10 and set sorry call set property at window edl underscore one setting def prop to val one okay we'll just do a compile it's good save and close and we'll just need to remember to change the edl name to edl underscore one so if we now just do a test run on that we're asked for a name i'll just call it mp click ok and we pass the 10 in and we clear it so the form is working on the tools menu under source code is a commuter module generator now the first instance i'm going to run this with the window open which is a bad thing to do so we'll find our window that one there and we are immediately told that there's a lock held by this station and that's basically because this window is open i can can click ok and carry on if i want to in the current version of oi that i'm working with but that would be bad because it would create the commuter module generator for me but it won't move the script or change the quick event now i'll cover how those going to change in a moment trust me so just remember for the moment we've got a clear quick event on one button and on the other button we've got a script which is two lines long three lines with the return let's close out of everything we'll go back to the commuter module generator we will select our form now there are no inserts if there were we could double click on the table here and we could pick our inserts we haven't got any so we don't need to worry for the options we do want to compile and we also want to update the form scripts and events what we want to do is we want to take what's there already and create quick events that will call the commuter module and remove the script again i'll show you that in a moment we then have two choices we can either select all controls and supported events on the form and what that will do is it will look at everything and create placeholders within our commuter module for us i want to keep it easy so i'm going to select update existing events only and that way it's only going to look at the quick event and the script that we've already got on our form we can add some comments so i'll just put uh, my comments here for the lesson and these are going to appear at the top of the code it's just a comment then we need to look at the controls and events we've got some options here we've got our controls so our mp form our edit line and the two buttons we can expand these out if we want to by double clicking them so for the button i could simply click uh, or pick the click event or the got focus event whatever um, in this instance i don't want to i'm just going to do everything and we've also got the option to click for pre and post process events so if we had any of those um, type events and we might want to click those i don't so i'm going to leave them unchecked once we're happy we can click on the create button and that will go away and create our commuter module generator for us would we like to say save these changes yes we would that's so that we can come back to this at any time and if we click the view code let's just close down the commuter module generator because we're done you'll see the code that open insight has created for us 
Now I'm not going to go through this in any great detail, but it's created the stored procedures. So it's a function which is MP underscore events, MP being the name of our form and then events to show that, that it, these are the events for our particular form. It's expecting to see the control end ID, which is the um, control that has called this program, the event that has been run. So in, in our instance, we might be clicking button one and we're running the click event and then we can pass in a number of parameters if we wish to. We then have some comments about this particular program. So the subroutine name, the description, so it's, this is the compute commuter module for the form MP, the date that it was created, who by, um, OI version at the moment that is not swapping out, um, but that should show the OI version in there. Um, but it does drop in the comments. So my comments here for the lessons. And I should stress that um, I'm currently working with Mike on all of this to tidy up all these little bits and pieces. So the OI version will be sorted out at some point. Um, but that's the beautiful thing about Revelation is that having direct access to the senior developers, it's brilliant for getting bits and pieces done. So then we go through some standard text. So we would declare a number of functions. We drop in some inserts. And a few other bits and bobs that I'm not going to worry about too much at the moment because I'm not a programmer. But what I am interested in is this area here, the case statements. You'll see here that we've got two case statements. One is for button two for the click event. And the other one is for button one for the click event. So the code hits here and then it, it drops to the go sub. So if we've clicked on that button two, it will then jump to the code here, which it will then run. So in this instance, it's then going to set val one to 10 and it's then going to update the edit line. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is I have a rogue return one, and that is because for the script, it's moved across exactly what I had in the form. So we might want to just remove that to keep this program clean. For the quick event, we don't need to worry about that because we just simply pass in a line of code, which is value equal or val equals send event at window clear. In other words, clear the window. So if we now do a save and close and we open up our window, if we look at the first button, you'll see that we still have a quick event on it. But now that quick event has been quite significantly changed. Just widen this a little bit. So you will see that we're now executing a stored procedure um, at MP events and basically we're going to pass in these parameters and this is tied to the click event. So if we come out of there and we go into the other button, you'll see now that we've no longer got a script. We now have a quick event, which is actually identical to what we had in the other button because it's going to grab the event and tell the code what to do and it will run that piece of code. So in actual fact, the quick events are pretty much always the same. And then when we run the form, we find now that everything is okay. And if we now want to debug our code, then we go to open store procedure, grab the MP events, and we can be in the code as well as the form. And if I come down to the bottom here and we'll just add a debug statement into here for the second button and we'll do a compile. That's fine. We'll do a save, come back to the form and do a test run. Now you can see that we are hitting the debugger from our program rather than having all of the scripts hidden in different controls, the scripts and the quick events. We've now got everything in one really easy to maintain and to work in routine. 
And that's the beauty of commuter modules. It makes you so much more efficient. And within Open Insight 10, the ability to have the code and the form open at the same time is just beautiful. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In the next one, we'll be looking at the context menu and you'll realize why we've been looking at the commuter module in this lesson. So I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.